Hello everyone. Firstly, I want to apologize for there not being really any updates recently or any activity on my channel at all. Honestly, I kind of just, um, I think I lost confidence in making things and so I'm hoping to get back into it if I can. It's always a little bit difficult, especially not being a native, but at the same time, I don't want to not do anything and give up entirely because um, I really enjoy learning the language and sharing it with people. I did make a little animation and had a, you know, a word of the day sort of thing, but then um, my Apple Pencil actually broke, <laughs> so I couldn't make anything anymore, which is um, a little sad. So instead, I've decided to start reading some poetry from a book uh, from Bedenoch or Barjanach. Whilst their dialect is not exactly the same as that of East Persia, it's really, really quite similar in a lot of ways. And um, the dialect comes out sometimes in the writing of the poetry. So I thought I would try and pronounce it as I think people in East Persia might have pronounced it. It goes without saying, though, that um, as I'm not a native... It, um, it might be a good starting point for people who are interested in learning the language, but don't take my pronunciation as 100% uh, gospel because um, there's always going to be points that I make a mistake, I might misread something or whatever. But with that said, this one is the first one in the book and um, I actually quite like it. I think it's a really nice little uh, poem or I'm not sure if it's a poem or a song or what it is, uh, how it's meant to be said or how it's meant to be sung or anything like that. Um, they probably wrote it down somewhere, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so with that long introduction over, let's have a look at it. Glen Fairshin and Sheandon. Lombavin V do Aska. Faramvain Vrolak Norak Asanjerachkag. Kroen Kroen et Halden. So I'll go through it and I will give some of the reasons for the pronunciation that I used. Uh, in the book East Perthshire Gaelic, the author gives us a few different pronunciations. Um, even in uh, toponymy, there appears to be two different pronunciations. And I don't know which one was more common, and I'm not entirely sure if there was any sort of rhyme or reason to it. However, um, the two pronunciations are glan with the extended or lengthened N sound and also glen, uh, for example, in glen chelch. So I'm wondering whether glen is more of an English pronunciation of it and then glan is more along the lines of the Gallic. I, I'm not sure though. Often the unstressed vowel sounds in East Persia Gallic uh, disappear entirely or become a really, really soft uh sound. So, for example, uh, Shiendan. It probably wouldn't have been said as Shiendan, but instead Shiendan. So a really sort of minimal sound, a minimal vowel there. The nun uh, also might have been reduced by some of the native speakers to just a na, na Shiendan. Um, that seemed to also occur from time to time. These are all features that are in the East Perthshire Gaelic book. The great thing about the book is that it does feature a lot of work on the pronunciation and um, has a slightly custom style international phonetic alphabet uh, used in it. A lot of my own Gaelic spellings and stuff like that, I guess, are from that book, whether that's um, a positive or a negative, I'm not sure. But I often forget what the um, I forget what the standard spelling of words are and end up spelling based upon the system of spelling that's used in that book. It's not terribly different. It's just um, every now and again, rather than using, say, a an E with the lengthening marker over the top and then an A, for uh, example, Jianu, uh, Jianu. Um, it would be a, a EU sound, which is just an elongated air sound. In East Perthshire Gaelic, there's only two L sounds. You've got the sort of the dark, strong one, like that. And you've also got the sort of uh, more forward 
fronting sort of L sound, which I'm not entirely sure the 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 name of it is, but it's kind of like a la 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 sound. Um, there's no sort of y sound or like the more palatal L sound. So the word yum, uh, for example, would be just said as lum in East Persia Gaelic. The um, the boo is often just said as a, a b or even sometimes a but sound. I don't have anything written for mian, um, but often when there's a double n sound or a double any sound uh, in the writing, it indicates in East Persia Gaelic that it would be a um, a held consonant. So, for example, n like that. So you'd find a, a diphthong in other dialects. For example, uh, a n n would often become aun. But in East Persia Gallic, it would either be an un or un, so kind of an extended form of it. You might have noticed also that I dropped the nad in favour of d. Um, there's a reason for this. In East Persia Gallic, the book, they um, they never say that, really. They often just say d. Uh, it's the same with um, num or namo becoming mo. So that seems to have been the pattern. And I think that's actually true for Manx as well. I think Manx has a similar pattern where they drop the un part of the sort of formula entirely and they've just used the uh, possessive pronouns. So dot mo be- or dot mo become the num and nud. You also notice I said far and vain with a uh, kind of a v sound where the f is. That's because in East Persia Gaelic, and this is true for much of the Far East uh, of Scot- Scottish, you know, the, the Gaeltach, um, often after a n or an m sound, so for example, an, um, the consonant that follows will change. So if it's a p, it'll become a b. If it's a t, it'll become a d. And this is also true for the F, it becomes a V sound. Further north, the F actually becomes a B sound rather than a, a V sound. But you can see where they're kind of similar anyway, like V versus, versus a B sound. Usually the final vowel in a word gets dropped entirely, but there's a few exceptions. And one of them is uh, Fuska, which keeps the last a uh, sound. Another one that I can think of is... Chanda, so um, turning around. I don't know that there's many other notes that I need to add, except for the a uh, meaning the, and also the a uh in an, also meaning the, uh, are pretty much never said. It would depend, of course, on your level of education and whether you'd spent any time in any other areas, etc. But people who hadn't been taught Gaelic in an official capacity at school or didn't learn uh, necessarily how to read and stuff like that, naturally they would never say ah and un because it just wasn't part of their dialect. They just didn't speak like that. They would say the N sound and just attach it to the front of the word. So, uh, for example, uh, we have orak. They would say norak. If you were learning the language and you want to say those words, so be my guest. <laughs> you can speak it however you like. But um, from the audios that I've listened to and from the transcription in East Persia Gallic, the book, um, it doesn't really ever appear. This is also true for the uh, possessive pronouns, ah, referring to uh, his or her. It never got said. Instead, it was just you would either have the following consonant changing, for example, a, a k sound becoming a h sound, or you would have no change, or you would have, if it's in front of a vowel, you'd have an an h. So I think I'll read it one more time, and then I'll also read the uh, the English as well. So, glan feishi nan shienten, lombavien vi do aska, farmvein vrolak, Norak as in Jerachkak, Crow and Croon er Halden, the Sias Jerak in Hessen. 
and then the English, Glenfeshi of storm blasts. Within thy shelter would I wish to be, where I would find the wortle, the cloud, and the blackberries, round nuts on the hazels, and red fish in the leans. I'm actually not entirely sure what that last word's pronunciation is meant to be. <laughs> um, but S and Essen is um, like a waterfall. So I hope you've enjoyed this little look at some poetry. Once again, I don't claim to be an expert at all, but it's something that I enjoy and you know, I hope that other people might be interested in it as well. I hope to make more of these and um, if you are interested in seeing more of these, please let me know. I, um, I love to hear from people. If you are learning any of the dialects, well, at all, I'd love to hear from you. If you are learning any of the dialects from the east of Scotland, anything that's related to, for example, Badenoch or uh, Aberdeenshire or um, Perthshire, anywhere around those areas, I would love to hear from you because, well, it's always nice to meet people who are learning something you know, very similar to what I myself am learning. And it would be good to meet other people who'd be interested in sharing and perhaps they can give me some inspiration for sources and things like that because it, a lot of it's gleaning things from old books online. And so um, I'm always happy to find new things and learning about new words and new pronunciations and new pieces of grammar. So, And in the same way, I'd love to be able to help other people with what they are doing if they are looking to revive or learn a dialect that is uh, moribund or in trouble or in fact there are no native speakers left like what is probably the case now for East Perthshire Gaelic unfortunately. But not all is lost. There is still a lot out there, a lot of recordings, a lot of bits and pieces to help put it all together. So hopefully we can, um, we can do something with it. Anyway, thank you very much for listening and or watching. It's turned into a bit of a podcast, actually. I hope that you'll join me for the next piece of poetry slash episode. Until then, be safe, be well, and take care.